In the headlines, death toll from Lagos train BRT accident rises to six as Governor Sangwo Lu declares three days mourning. Reactions as INEC postponed governorship and state's assembly elections. United Nations condemns ISWAP killing of over 30 farmers, fishermen in Burno community. On the foreign scene, United Nations Security Council team arrives in Democratic Republic of Congo as rebel forces advance. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Darshan Husseina Usman. And we begin on a sad note where Lagos State Governor Babaji de Sangwolu has said six persons are confirmed dead in the accident on Thursday involving a moving train and Lagos staff, Lagos State staff boss in PWD Shogunle Keja. Sangwolu, while giving an update at Lagos State University Teaching Hospital after the incident, said 85 passengers, including dependents of the staff, were involved in the accident. Two women were immediately declared dead after the bus was crushed by a moving train. The governor said that 29 persons suffered serious injuries, 42 suffered moderate injuries, while 8 persons suffered mild injuries. Sang Wo Lu said the driver of the bus was reckless in his driving and has been arrested by the police for questioning. The governor noted that there is enough blood to treat the victims, while he encouraged the public to donate more blood to the hospital bank. Um, so, so we have 85 passengers that were um, in the bus um, from the immediate triage, you know, um, um, that was conducted and to separate, you know, um, various degrees of injuries. 42 were, were clarified as moderate injuries, um, 29 are serious injuries, 8 are mild injuries. And um, unfortunately, we have recorded six fatalities. Two were brought in dead on the site, and which was what last la, la, la Sema, um, the first respondents, you know, um, have talked about. Um, last suit will be collecting um, blood donors, you know, to want to encourage the public who wishes to donate blood to comfort. And because the, the bank, the blood bank that we have, you could see that, that they've responded immediately very, very well. Um, we are in good supply. We have more than enough blood to take care of all of the patients. But indeed, as it's done everywhere, you need to restock back that, that, that bank. All our flags, because state flags, political flags, should be you know, raised you know, at half mass for the next um, three days. We are actually also declaring you know, um, um, a three day you know, mourning for us as a state so that we can. Um, mourn uh, our staff very, very well, deeply, and um, um, we can um, have time to go around the family members and just, you know, uh, commensurate with them. Postponement of the governorship and state assembly election across the country by the Independent National Electoral Commission has set tongues wagging in Kano as people express divergent views. While some believe that it is the right thing to do, others argue that it will make no difference but prolong the current economic hardship. Trust TV's correspondent Idris Debrin reports. Following the postponement of the election to March the 18th, some politicians say it is the right move considering the alleged irregularities identified during the just-concluded presidential and national assembly election. There is no reason for INEC to be failing in terms of um, logistics um, operations. That's one. Secondly, there is also issue with the IREF. You know, I, one of the reasons why I decided to contest for election is because of the confidence I have in the electoral process, you know. Uh, I was given so much assurance by INEC and also by the presidency that uh, the election would be free and fair and we would not have issues. But then, you know, one of the most important key component of the electoral process is that IREF. And we have seen how it has felt, you know, on the day that is supposed to be optimal. According to some voters in Kanu, the postponement of the gubernatorial election will only add more pressure on the electorate who would have wanted to finish voting once and for all. I think INEC should have allowed this election to just go ahead because we want to finish it once and for all. People are suffering. 
We just want to finish this election so that we know that we are over it. Means it is over. But while the Independent National Electoral Commission say the election is postponed to enable the commission reconfigure Viva machines, these members of the Transition Monitoring Group in Kano are out on the streets to demand for peaceful election come March the 18th. We have witnessed what happens during the presidential, presidential election. The killings, the destruction of poor parties are live. So we are anticipating the same thing to happen during the gubernatorial election. Politicians are making arrangements to destroy the, the, the setting and the situation in the election so that we organize this campaign rally to tell the world that we don't want violation of rules or regulation. At the moment, the Independent National Electoral Commission in Kano, like in many other parts of the country, have continued to assure voters that the election will be free, fair, credible and violence-free, and that voters should feel free to come out to exercise their civic responsibility on 18th March. Idris Jibrin, Trust TV News, Kano. Residents of Maiduguri, the Borno state capital, have expressed dissatisfaction with INEC's postponement of the governorship elections to next weekend. To them, the date shift will extend the hardship occasioned by the Naira scarcity, which they hoped would be eased after March 11. They called on the government to tackle the cash scarcity to curtail the exorbitant prices of goods and services. <laughs> Mukas in Chekamu, more especially Ayanzu, a coimus ala Muna Samuel Labari Chua Bayanza Beda Sekekudi. This suffering we found ourselves is so dying. It's well known that after the elections, cash is going to be in circulation because to feed is a problem. It would have been better we finish the election once and for all so we forget about it. <laughs> Zabe Yazo, that is a one governor Akati and Daga. Sakamakondaga, Allah is a movie as a moment of the adhere. We thought this Saturday we will know who will be our governor, but now that INEC wants to reconfigure the Beavers machines, it's fine, but we just want this election to be over. So for the first time, I'm not presenting the machine until we're going to be with us. Did the Baka and Mokum answer any election? Even the presidential elections, they didn't use Beaver's machine. Voting was done manually, so what do they want to reconfigure? Prices of foodstuffs have increased and money is so scarce, making life difficult. We just hope that they are truly doing the right thing. Similarly, residents of Makodi, the Benue state capital, say they are disappointed with the postponement of the governorship and state house of assembly elections. The residents who said they were fully ready for the exercise were however greeted with the news of the shift by the Independent National Electoral Commission to March 18. Jimmy Azande brings us their reaction in this report. Benue residents who had looked forward to the post wanted an end to the suspicion and anxiety raised by the keen contest in the state. They spoke on the preparedness of some political parties and agreed that although the postponement is solely to consolidate INEX preparations, it may however benefit other political parties. Waking up this morning to understand that INEC has shifted the election to next Saturday on the 18th. Uh, in fact, we were disappointed. But of course, we don't have any choice than to wait for the day they have scheduled the election coming Saturday next week on the 18th. It, it will affect some political parties because I understand that uh, from yesterday, in fact a few days back, a lot of people we are giving out money, mobilizing people, trying to uh, buy some voters. But of course, now that the election has been shifted, they will have to go back to their work, to their drawing table, to see do what uh, they were doing. So to some extent, it has affected some political parties, especially those that were ready to use money to buy votes. On the flip side, some residents feel the postponement might dampen the spirit of many eligible voters who had looked forward to casting their votes this Saturday and lead to voter party in the state. When I heard the announcement, I was somehow disappointed. But when I have a second thought about it, the election is all about Nigeria, it's not about political parties. And I look at it as the INEC want to do something that will favor 
everybody, all the political parties in Nigeria. And that is why they decide to honor the courts and then shift their election for, uh, the, for the interests of Nigeria, not for a political party. And then all Nigerians who come up and then be patient and vote for the day the election is, is already it, that is rearranged to take place next Saturday. Another category of Benue residents said the postponement has altered their calendar of activities as the shift has kept many social and economic activities on the wait. Because this election was, we have faced so many things, just as uh, the school. Some schools are down based because of these uh, elections. Now, I'm not shifting it again. It will affect the community of the, 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 the school. So, I feel bad. Uh, they would have conducted this election and allowed the student to go at least do the remaining three weeks for a bucket. But shifting it is a single any good reason at all of shifting it. Either way, the electorates will have to exercise patience with the process. For politicians, it is time to tighten loose ends for possible victory. Moving on to security, the United Nations has condemned the brutal killing of over 30 civilians in Mukdolo village, Gamborungala local government area of Borno state. The fishermen were ambushed and murdered on Wednesday by suspected fighters of the Islamic State of West African province. A statement by UN Resident and Humanitarian Coordinator for Nigeria, Matthias Schmail, extended his condolences to the bereaved families and wished the injured a speedy recovery. Schmail called the attack another horrific reminder of the insecurity that IDPs and other affected by 13 years of armed conflict in the region face daily. The coordinator observed Mugdollo had been abandoned prior to the attack due to the activities of non-state armed groups. Our reporter in Maiduguri, Beatrice Kuruzzi, gives an update on the incident. At the moment, the state government has reacted to the incident. The state governor sympathizes with the victims of uh, the attack in the community and then uh, the, the those that were killed has has already been buried, and uh, the show of the of Pikwa town held a security council meeting with the community leaders and religious leaders and uh, other groups. So the um, at the meeting, the decided that um, that the the town is not safe for them, so that uh, no resident should be should be should go out of the town unless given permission with what has happened of after the attack and then uh, 30 people were killed some survived six were just sustained injuries but along the line they died and then four uh four are alive or they are they have serious injuries and they are in the degree receiving treatment in different uh, hospitals that has not been disclosed. So um, that is what has been happening now. So currently the state government is uh, having uh, security uh, talks with most security agencies of, of what has happened. You know, so they are trying to improve the security in that local government and other places too. Away from security, since the beginning of the cash swap policy, which drastically reduced currency in circulation, points of sale operators across the country have increased transaction charges for customers using the service. Some of the operators and customers in Lagos lamented the hardship occasioned by the policy and called on the government to address the situation. The report. Few days after the 2023 presidential election, Specifically, on Friday, the 3rd of March, the Supreme Court of Nigeria ruled out that all 1,000 Naira node, 500 Naira node, along with the earlier reintroduced 200 Naira node, remain legal tender with the new note until 31st of December 2023. However, despite the Supreme Court order, many banks in the country have refused to dispense cash to their customers, both inside the banking halls and also at the automated teller machine. ATM. To this end, Nigerians seeking to get cash for their daily transaction are left to the mercy of point-of-sale operators 
POS who use this opportunity to increase transaction charges to those who come to them for cash. At Ogba area of Lagos State, some customers said the POS charges are now a case of using money to buy money from instead of paying for transaction. They also said traders are witnessing an all-time low in patronage due to non-acceptance of the whole Naira notes. If you don't have no money, you can't enter vehicle. And uh, it's for POS now. If I want to use 2000 now, go to POS now. If you has there now, they will say they need to collect 700 Naira. 700 Naira, 600 Naira out of 2000. So what remain? Nothing remains for you again. So so things are as hard. So I don't even know what to say. It's very hard. If you want to collect 5000 Naira now, they need to collect 1500 out of your money. Your own money. People around us, all these our national you know, transporter, they are not uh, uh, collecting the money from us. And the filling station also, they reject the money from us. Instead of collecting cash, they are collecting, they are collecting POS to collect money from us. So that is why we don't collect it. And people that are selling market, they reject the money. The old money, we are not seeing some in my business. People want to transfer. People want don't want to collect the old money back from us. And they ask us to collect it. So that has been the problem. No sense. Because of that, we cannot buy, we cannot sell food. We are hungry. The people serve. People, now, they are doing it here. He collect uh, old money, come. Now, nobody collect the money. So people will say, let me meet them. All these motor people, whether they will collect it, and they did not collect the money. What do you want us to do? Huh? Please, so, oh, President, all you people, Governor, or oh, President, please, we are begging you. You are the one that is supposed to talk. President, please. Citizens are of the opinion that President Mohamed Boris should address the nation on the Supreme Court order on the circulation of the old Naira notes of 1,000 Naira and 500 Naira with the new ones, as many Nigerians, especially the traders and transporters, are waiting for these directives, or that of the CBN governor, in order to accept the old note. As the Naira crunch bites harder, traders are now exploring other options to receive payments from their customers. One of the options is the use of POS agents who in turn charge a fee for the transactions, but pressure on internet infrastructure has increased the rate of failed transactions. Zainab Karai reports. As the Naira scarcity persists, traders and customers have been forced to resort to POS transactions between buyers and sellers. However, cases of failed online transactions that are caused by traffic and ineffective internet services have made customers reluctant to use e-transfers as a payment option. Though many lauded the cashless policy target of the Apex Bank, the infrastructure placed to make this possible has been questionable. One of the customers that came to the shop this morning, I am the one that gave him 100 naira to pay for the space where he parked his car. And he didn't, he later he did not buy the goods again because he was trying to make the transaction and it was not uh, going. The one I saw there before yesterday, the one I saw there yesterday, even the one that they debited me and I did not get the money. I have transacted almost three people now that the money did not go and those people now, they are customers, they have gone. It will show paid, transaction okay, but money is not in my account. I went to the bank to, to complain now. They say it's 10 days for me to see my money. People who do say Gary, say like all these village stuff, they, are, they don't listen to you when you talk about uh, transfer. They want to see cash in their hand. You pay, you go. According to traders in the market, the cashless policy has affected their daily patronage and by implication, their income. Look at the market now. We cannot see people in the market. Everywhere is your door. It's your door. People are not entering the market. There's no cash. Eh? No cash in the market. No cash to enter the market. Somebody buys something. You can, the person cannot go with what he or she has bought. Because without us getting uh, the transfer, we cannot release our goods. POS will collect 300, 400, 200 for just 1,000 naira. Some of the POS. So how much are we making? It is our business is not even going, moving. To even withdraw and deposit sometimes is very, very difficult. The network is bad. Most of the bank, you tried more than three times, 
they will debit the person. There's no way you can even. And to, for them to even get access to the bank, again, at least there's another problem there again. Though the Supreme Court has ruled that the old 1,500 and 200 Naira notes will remain legal tender till December 31st, 2023. Nigerians are yet to get any form of relief as they await the go-ahead from the Central Bank and President Buhari for the full implementation of the Supreme Court's directive. Zainab Karai, Trust TV News, Abuja. You're watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. Why number of female legislators is shrinking? Stay with us. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. If you're just joining us, you're watching Trust News Update. Here's a recap of our top stories. We told you that death toll from Lagos train BRT accident rises to six as Governor Sangwolu declares three days mourning. You also heard that reactions as INEC postpone governorship and state assembly elections. Moving to more stories, women in Bochi State have commended their level of participation and involvement in the just-concluded presidential and national assembly election. They have also reaffirmed their desire to do same during the governorship and state house of assembly polls on Saturday, March 18. The woman made this known in an interview with Trust TV in Bochi, where they noted that some improved participation is needed despite the challenges they face as women. The report. According to them, during the last presidential and national assembly elections, women in Nigeria participated in large number as part of their contribution towards electing good leaders that can turn around the fortunes of the nation for good. This, they said, is evident in some polling units across Bauchi State where the population of women outnumbered that of their male counterparts. Women were encouraged to always participate in the voting process, you know, the, every woman wanted their vote to count. And women are becoming more enlightened. It's not like before that woman is a uh, woman, her place is in the kitchen, but now they are more, becoming more informed. And, you know, this time around, they were told that their vote will count, that the electoral process will be free, transparent. So a lot of women, you know, were encouraged and prompted them to come out. Women are enlightened, not like before. The women, they, they don't know they are left from their right. But a lot of us now are enlightened that, we should, that voting is our right. Nobody should tell us it's not our right. Others share their views on women participation during the voting process and the likely impact on the overall electoral process. Most of the women, they are promising. One. Secondly, they are very easy to convince. So for this reason, I think that's why most of the politicians, they decided to use them during the campaign. Because if you give them a talking, you convince a woman to go on board for you. They are always in support of development, development of the family, of the state and the nation. So anytime they are called upon, in fact, if not even in politics, in anything you do, if you ask a woman to do this, they are always happy to do that. Women mostly go out because they are easily convinced and they believe that, you know, whoever they are going to vote will work for their good. You know, they believe in good governance, they believe in, you know, the people that they want to, to vote. I think that's why they, they are always coming out in large numbers. However, Despite their numbers and contributions to the electoral process, the women say they are still left behind. 
To this end, they want more elective and appointed positions, especially in the new governments that will emerge at all levels. Despite the consistent clamor for increased democratic representation and equal opportunities for women in Nigeria, the feminine gender had an abysmal outing at the just concluded presidential and national assembly elections. Trustee Vice Shafiu Suleiman takes a look at the shrinking number of women coming to the 10th assembly after the 2023 national assembly election and what the future holds for female politi political aspirations. There is currently 20 female legislators at the two chambers of the National Assembly, 13 in the House of Representatives and 7 senators in the upper legislative chamber. Incidentally, the results announced by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, indicate that none of the seven female serving senators returned to the Red Chamber, while three women were elected to the Senate during the last election. At the House of Representatives, with 13 female lawmakers, only seven were able to secure their return. Even as seven women from different political parties made it to the Green Chamber to join the returning seven to the Tenth Assembly. Also, out of the 18 presidential candidates that slog it out in the 2023 presidential contests, only one female candidate, Oji Chichi, of Allied People's Movement, APM, got her name on the ballot. Though, INEC statistics show that a total of 92 female ran for the Senate and 288 for the House of Representatives, less than 10% eventually made it to the National Assembly. With the raging lobby for 35% affirmative action and intensified advocacy during Women National and International Days for Enhanced Female Representation, in addition to growing number of female voters in Nigeria, the clamor for equal opportunities and women political representation could be said to be retrogressing. Shapiro Suleiman. Trust TV News, Abuja. The Supreme Court on Friday affirmed Rufai Hanga as senator-elect for Kano Central Senatorial District under the platform of the New Nigeria People's Party. The Federal High Court and Court of Appeal had ordered INEC to recognize Rufai Hanga as a replacement for Ibrahim Shekaro as Kano Central Senatorial Candidate of the NNPP. And finally, on the foreign scene, a United Nations Security Council delegation arrived in Democratic Republic of Congo on Thursday for a three-day visit, the world body said, as heavy clashes with M23 rebels continued in the east. M23 fighters have also advanced in recent days, threatening to cut off all road links to Goma, a city of more than one million people on the Rwandan border. The delegation was due to meet President Felix Shishekedi before traveling to Goma on Saturday. The UN peacekeeping mission in the DRC, known as MONUSCO, said the objective of the Council's visit was to assess the security and humanitarian situation in North Kivu. And with that, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Darshan Husseina Usman. Thanks for watching.